Black Magic TV, of course, you know that. If you're new here, welcome. If you're old here, boy, do we got a doozy today. It's uh, it's late. It's a late on a school night. Late on a school night. I took the opportunity because I went to see Four in the Strange Band, and I harassed Coleman last time he was here, and it goes to show, it never hurts to ask because it fucking works out sometimes. Hey, man, if we finish before midnight, I'm down to spend 45 minutes. I appreciate it, dude. And so tonight with me, I have Coleman Williams. Better known as Four from Four in the Strange Band. Thanks for having me, dude. Thank you for coming. Yeah, um, you already know I'm a big fan of yours. Thank I, you. I no, man, that's why I get to do it, man, because you want to support me. So yeah, you know, thank you. And everybody came out on a Thursday. We did. We did real good tonight, dude. Yeah. It was a great show. You guys sound fucking awesome. I was talking to your drummer Hunter. Yeah, right? I have two and, hunters in the band. Yeah, yeah and but, I was telling him, I was like, dude, it's uh, he was. The, I assumed that those guys had all played together for a long time. So, the uh, rhythm section. So Hunter and Ethan, the first Hunter in my band, are brothers. And okay. they played together for about 20 years. And, th- and that's the, the drummer is my newest member. Uh, so I've had a lot of members I've created out to find the perfect bandmates in about four years now with the sheer of the band. And uh, Trent, my steel player, uh, Hunter Mellish, and Ethan Salas have been with me now for two years. Uh, they made, they're on the hang, hang Dog, the newest record I made. That's my band. I had to switch out a drummer. And uh, Hunter Edwards, who you're, you talked to, he's a badass. And uh, he's been with us now for three tours. And he's great, man. He's, he's tight. Yeah, and he does like this. It, man, it's just like little subtle things I was catching. Like he's like big on the backbeat. And he's, so got, a, he's got some funk to him. And it gives it like a... a you know, it, it like polishes off this already weird thing. Like, cause obviously you're called the strange band, mm-hmm. but it's also a thing where like, I was speaking with Eric about how, what I dig is like in an age of like so many people cosplaying. Yeah. It's like, Oh, these are just like the best musicians. <laughs> we try, man. That means a lot. Thank like, you. you know, we try, we try to have a good time and we, tonight we played a new song that we've never done on stage before. That it was, cool. it was, was awesome. sick. Yeah, man. People like the relationship jokes, you know. Some people yeah, have problems I, with drugs and alcohol. Some people have problems with relationships. So, you met yeah. my ex girlfriend, but yeah. I, was, I was I'm that guy, the guy that probably should just stop fucking <laughs> stop hey, man, for a while. That one's just for you. Then. Yeah, there you go, there you go, just for you. Was, I've been jokingly calling it AA. Like, yeah, you know, it's like, <laughs> it like be. yes, yeah. yeah, been there, done that. RA, you know, yeah. one day there'll be relationships that aren't as messy. Yeah, you know? called the, friend, <laughs> the fucking friends of Bill over here. <laughs> I try to make stuff we can all relate to you know? yeah and dude. i think having crazy relationships or losing people or the, the the sad stuff ironically but that's the stuff we all you no matter what you do you can't get away from it you know? right like, it, it happens to everyone it's one of those things that there's like, solidarity in it right we all it, do it and we you all... just need somebody to be like no i w- i felt that way before uh-huh. to like bring you out of yeah, it you man. know what like, i mean to be honest when i've had my lowest lows you know sometimes that one person's like dude i've been there that makes it feel yeah. better even if you can't fix it. You yeah. Know, anytime like, as a human, when you think nobody understands me, nobody's felt this way. There's someone, there's someone who has felt the way you felt exactly. like no matter what, you know what I mean? Uh, dude, also you've, you know, you would spoke about it tonight about how you're not going to try to sound like someone else in your family. Obviously your family. Well, I learned from those, you know, my grandfather, right. and my dad, people that had to do that for years. And then they actually got notoriety from not doing that. Right. It wasn't from the years of the covers. It was right. Like, and that's, you know, they helped me, you know, I also went to college, you know, which is something that not many people in my family have taken first, right. When I got, but I got, I was sick when I was younger, man. And, you know, like that was the thing that made me kind of want to live a little different. And I wanted to, if I was ever going to do this, I wanted to do it right. I didn't want to do it because of where I come from. I didn't want to do it because I was told I was going to do it by everyone. You know, I wanted to do it to show the best respect I could to my family. And that's what I've done. You know, I'm in, I started in my late twenties. Now I'm in my mid thirties and it's been successful and I've done it entirely from the fans. People like you, Yeah, I'm down to come out and do a podcast after a show, man, you know? Well, dude, and also you're, you know, like you said, you're the first totally independent artist. That's happened. Everyone else was constrained. Well, yeah. My by dad some went way. independent after years of not being independent. Right. And my grandpa just didn't have the choice, man. His mom was his manager until he was in his mid twenties. You know, right. he was burst into the system. He didn't get to make those choices. Right. And then 
through his tragedy he did though and really took hold of all that you right. know what i mean but you know that was that that was my biggest inspiration man you know it didn't, didn't have to prove anything it just felt right for me you know and everyone that does it in my family there's nothing wrong the way they do it it's it's great and i love that i just for me to do it i had to do it this way because if i didn't i wouldn't be into it and everybody i feel like the biggest reason people like the shows you know, I have a lot of, I love my records, but I have a lot of people tell me they wish I could like bottle what I do in my shows compared to what I do on the studio, you know, just because the energy I bring at my shows. And and the thing is though, like one day I'll do that. You just keep making records. We've done a record a year for two years. I'm trying to do one this year. You know, it's like, for me, I just, I love being on the stage and hanging out with everybody. And I think that's kind of what transfers, right. you know, and like, yeah, it sounds so cool, you know, when you're with musicians and i have a lot of friends that do this that you know you want to play those arenas you want to play those stages and i've done a couple of those shows but to be honest they're kind of impersonal it's right. not a bad thing it's not digging that at all it's just like personally like dude getting to play tonight for like 100 people on a thursday it's fucking the best yeah and to play with a guy like possessed by paul james conrad Wirt, a guy who so I've, I've looked up to that dude since i was in high school yeah and getting to meet him and play with him and now i'm doing a whole tour with this guy that's the first the first show of our tour together you know and like man that's that's the, the craziness of it is like all the money in the world is great to pay the bills and to get you what you want but like that this is the stuff that makes me like i'm doing something right you know and yeah and like i said like if i ever want to do that stuff it's just what i need to do first is my path on and having fun with it, man. You know, like I said, when I was a kid, I did punk and metal stuff for years in high school, and I never let people even know who I was because I didn't want people to judge, like, oh, well, then you're doing this because of the, you know, I wanted people to throw beer cans at me and play in front on dirty pavements with nobody there or play fests where 17 bands play and everybody plays for 15 minutes. Like, you know, yeah. and that was like, for me, like, that made me fall in love with music, man. But, like, going to school was really important to me after, you know, I was legal. And, like, I, I love that I did it that way because now that I feel like I kind of bring my DIY vibe to my country show. I make all right. my merch. All my bandmates are my friends. They're not people I buy. I've had to use different people, but I try to keep people close in the family. You know, I tour in a goofy short bus. You and, know, and you like, can tell that about the band. Like, yeah. you can tell that, like, again, because, you know, like I said, it's not a it's it's just like everyone is an original person. And that's what I love. Well, and yeah, it, you got to be like, I love it, man. Like, I think we all make each other better. I do tour by myself. But like I every time I do shows alone, I have such a good time. But I miss the band always. I miss the guys. Right. Like, you know, these are all people that are sharing the dream with me. The goofy, crazy you know, we're pretty much pirates on wheels, you know, just trying right. to go around. And, like, tomorrow I'll be in Des Moines. Day after we'll be in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, you know, and, and then we're on our way to Montana, you know. So it's, like, it's great. It's fun. Hopefully we won't catch too much snow and, like, you know, getting to meet like-minded people. You've seen me. Right. Like, I love – I didn't realize, you know, and now I do. We talked about it a minute ago, like, you know, the riot room. Right. I, I love – that tour was such a weird tour, man. The very first tour for this band, we had already released a single with a five-piece band, was the Strange Banjo Tour. That was the thing, if you remember, that was yeah, the gimmick. Yeah, that was the gimmick. Because COVID, it was we, you couldn't bring a whole band at the time, so just me and my banjo player at the yeah. time, man, and we did the run, and, like, that was such a fun show. And, like, dude, drinking with Timmy, he was, like, pouring shots, and we were drinking all night and having a great I time. I just saw that and then, then he showed nights me ago. <laughs> the, the, the Underground Railroad yeah. underneath the gr like right. the fucking stage by the green, the dirt floor green room. Like, yeah. That shit's awesome. And, like, I was so sad to hear that it died, but I always felt so lucky. Like, I just started my career touring. This is, like, almost now four years ago, and, like, this place that was only there for the very end of it, I got to see it. You yeah. Know? And, like, you got to meet me there, and now, you know, years now later. Now here we are. Said, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, I mean, now I've played Kansas City like seven times. That was the yeah, first Yeah, and you're playing Knuckleheads, one. which is great. And Four times now. And and Frank really stepped up when, like, other all the other venues closed down. He's taking on other kinds of music dude, I now. love Frank, man. He's a homie, and, like, I would do anything for that dude. You know, anybody that cares about the music scene, man, you know, Nashville. I love where I'm from. I'm born and raised out of Nashville, and I love that town. But in the past ten years, and it's not one person's fault. Everyone has chosen the money over the story or yeah. the, the dirt, man. You know, uh, uh, off my new record, Hang Dog, I don't know if you dove in much, but Fray the Line is about what we did to Ernest Tubb's record shop. So back in the day, Ernest Tubb had record stores in Fort Worth, Texas. He had one in Gatlinburg. He had one in Knoxville. He had one in Nashville. And they all kind of shut down over the years. 
and the last one was in Nashville. It had been there now far before I was born. Right. And as of last year, his next of kin sold it. And then everybody was up in arms about it being sold, and we all wanted to save it, and Rolling Stone did an article, and it looked like it was going to be safe. And eight months later, it still got sold anyway. And now it's a bar. It's a different bar. Take tour right. now. And, and, and it sucks because, like, you know, like, you think, well, how's up the music scene? It's like, well, dude, the Ernest Tubb Rare Show was never the best store in the town, but it was a guy, the Texas Troubadour, Ernest Tubb was a born and raised Texas boy that gave a large portion of his life to Tennessee. And even after Hank Williams was gone, he was building Honky Tonk Inn on Broadway. He, that's why that building, like Roberts, Layla's back in the day, and you had the Ernest Tubb Record Shop. Before everything, those were like three of the staples of those streets right there. You know? Right. And, and these days, man, like, I'll still go down and see Roberts, but most of the music here there isn't even country, and it doesn't have to be. I don't do just country, but it's like on Broadway, that's what you think you'll see, and like right. dude, it's mostly like cover bands, and not even country cover bands, just rock bands and stuff on the right side of the street, and the left side, you've got Roberts and Layla's, but in between it now is like even Tootsie's. Like You can't walk into the buildings because it's like so packed and... It's just right. not really it's just tourist trap. It's just now. not really fun, you know. But I made a song about it, man, because the music scene is so important to me. Like, like I said, why I do this, the jacket I wear when I play, I've had since I was like fifteen. Used to have sleeves. All the bands I played with or bands that have inspired me are all over it. And like, you know, that's I've worn that with every musical band I've ever done. And with a country band, I like to have it still because it's like the punk rock that I love. Because there's a lot of stuff in punk rock I find country. Like, okay, you know, people, of course, want to tell me about Hank Williams. Like, Lux Interior, The Cramps, one of the coolest bands ever. His hero, his all-time hero, his whole life is Hank Williams. Right. You wouldn't listen to that dude's music and think that. No. Gigi Allen. You know, Gigi but Allen, uh, Jesus Christ name? Allen's favorite musician in the world is Hank Williams. You know, yeah. and, and, like, used to say he could talk to him from the grave and shit. Like, you I know, believe all him. these punk rock dudes love, and, and like, I, the older... I've gotten, like, I feel so grateful. Like, it's not there anymore. There's not one house shows property that's allowed to be out there because of all the massive growth we've had in Nashville. 80 to 85 percent flux is people that aren't from there in the past 10 years. You know, we've gone up like 700 percent. So you can't afford to buy a house show club where you live right. in one room and let people rock out, you know. And yeah. uh, Kansas City's trying. Frank is trying. You yeah. know, Knucklehead's. It's trying, and Nashville's still trying. We're not going to give up. I haven't left for a reason. I'll never fucking leave. You know, yeah. everyone might get pushed out. Like, I got to defend where I'm from. I love where I'm from. I just have to give where I'm from a hard time because I know how cool it used to be. Oh, you it's know, the sa it's same thing and here. You, right? you, I feel the same well, way. You were here, saying yeah. earlier, you know, talk about punk bands. You know, like, dude, like when I was a kid, and I'm only 33. Like when I was a kid, like easily, you could go to shows in 10 different places over a weekend for free. Right. Nobody would get hurt. Nobody would get robbed. There's people there doing drugs. There's people who are not doing drugs. Right. To see music. You could see yeah. like a country show. You could see a metal show, punk show. Kid just reading spoken word poetry with a fucking Moog synthesizer. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> dude, but that what shit was, that was guy's like. guy's name? There was a dude that did yeah. that. There's I a remember, lot of dudes that did that. There was this that, dude like man, something like, the rainbow, but that guy, somehow he was from, not from here, but he played every, dude, every there's weird there's show a, there's that There's a lot guy of dudes at. that have done that. And that, like I said, that scene is the only reason I'm here today. Yes, I'm related to Hank Williams. Yes, I'm the first of the fourth generation. But for me, like the reason I make music is because like, why I wanted to be a teacher, why I got into education, why I got into owning my own business, everything I've done in my life, like, to be here came from that DIY. Like, you want to do something? You don't have the tools to do it? You can't do it? Well, guess what? If you work hard enough with the weird friends you have, you might be able to make something. That's right. Just, similar to this, this, you know, the body, yeah. you know, it's, it's just... I've rocked out in a lot of basements, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and now I get to play on stages, but it comes from the basements, man, and I have that deep love of that. Like, tonight, you know, my show's pretty country, but then, like, I was really stoked tonight because we've worked on it for a couple months, that Jesus Lizard oh, cover yeah, that we did Jesus tonight. Lizard cover well, I love the Jesus Lizard. Band. Yeah. I loved Wayne Dennison. He worked with my dad. He played with my dad for years. Like, his style is so cool because that's a mainstream artist that's also, though, kind of off, like, the beaten path. Not everyone knows that band, but right. a lot of people know that band. You know yeah. what I mean? And, like... I'm fine in my music career and world to be that level. You know, you go higher. That's super cool. And that's awesome. But like, I'd love to be that band that, you know, it's like not everyone knows Tom Waits, but the people you want to know in life know Tom Waits, right. <laughs> you know, right. like, yeah, yeah like that the litmus flavor. test, the, 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 lit, the litmus test people, you know, like, you know, just people that are cool, people that are good to each other, you know, it's like, 
I don't care who you are, Cowboys, punk rockers, like, you know, I want everybody to get along in the room and have fun with each other and just get it out of you. Have a beer. And yeah, that's it. my whole thing, dude. I just love people that are like, you know, and I told you, we talked, you know, I was a criminal or whatever, but hey, man. I, I, it's criminal it's, these days. You yeah, know, we're all a criminal. It's one made me like, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I don't like, I don't like fake shit and I don't like, um, you know, I don't no struggle, no story. I, I, yeah, I don't need 12,000 words for a yes or no question. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's and, and and you strike me as that kind of guy. And also, like, I can smell like I have this keen ability to, like, know what's hip and like <laughs> what's good. Yeah. And like, you know, and I can smell authenticity, you know, and that's what I get from you because your music is so different from dude, I'm making it for me. It, first if, if, yeah and, then, and like i'm stoked people like it but like to be honest like i it probably sounds really selfish or weird but like most of my songs and music i make for me right it's for me that's who you like, make it for right? yeah but it's not in like a weird way i love that people love it but yeah. like like i don't know i grew up writing poems and stuff like i i, I might have been a, a full-time musician most of my career until my later life but like i've been writing since i was like five and i'm not talking like writing crayons on a paper like i have hundreds of composition books that i just and i'll probably never use any of it because i wrote through all that bad writing to find my good writing. right you know like so stories and feelings and like all my songs are pretty personal to me like i don't mean for them they just are like you know like stuff i care about or random things that happen like uh cigarette ends off my first record right that's the last thing that someone i almost married when my younger life that i was really in love with the last thing they ever said to me was they said i was full of stems and cigarette ends and i'll never see you again yeah and they still have it you know it's like real just real stuff you know and people like the song and i've had people be like you know oh that's such a weird you know and it's just because literally i wrote it for only me to understand it or you know like i like sometimes you'll you'll hear a song and you'll be like oh i have no idea what the fuck that means pretty rad you know because like, yeah. it's like my own lingos you know right my own, but also like, like i you take like what makes a song the best is when that's what it means to you yeah but you're not sitting here saying this is what it means no, no because no, 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 i could no, no. hear that i like the and it might remind yeah. me of that same chick yeah, someone someone has said a thing, something yeah. thing to me yeah, right you like, know what i mean that's the thing if you leave a little mystery too people can get their interpretations you know it's like catcher in the rye complex a thousand people yeah. can read the same thing and five of them might be something crazy with it 50 of them might kind of get it and then maybe the other 45 might like really have your story like is their answer but you know that's not all of them you don't right get, and that you know once you put it out there it's not yours anymore and, right. and that's one thing I've, I've gotten more used to that I, I wasn't as comfortable with at first like i was very protective and like the more I do it, I'm just like, hey, you know, we're gonna put this out here and hope you like it. And if you don't, I'll still have fun up here. But I hope you do too, you know. And for sure, it, it it's it's great, man. It, it it makes me feel very fulfilled, and and people are really supportive of it. And like you know, I've played all 48 connected states uh, over the past almost four years, and it's been so fun, you know. Like I tour six to eight months a year, and it's been my full time job now for four years. It's been really awesome. Well, dude, and you. By all accounts, from what I've seen, you're not an ego guy. I can't, man, and yeah. which, I, I, everyone has an ego, right? I have my days. Everyone has their days, but like at the end of the day, man, I just try to be like, I just want everyone to get along with each other, which is never going to happen, but it's always what I want, you know. But everybody's got shit to get pissed off about. Everybody's got shit to be sad right. about. We can at least tolerate each other for a couple hours. Yeah, you know? and, like, and I think that comes from like the DIY thing yeah. for sure. That's like a very punk rock. Uh, idea but dude you have this like your voice is so unique and then the music like for somebody to say you like to me i'm sitting there going like fuck man like those new songs you play them and it sounds just like the record Thanks, when i man. see you Thanks. it has that live energy because you're in a live setting but that's the most dude when somebody can record something and then you go see it live and it's sat from your voice to like thank you the the pedal player like all the oh, little the subtleties yeah. that but man you guys have this sound that like it it screams sadness hmm. 
but yeah. it makes you feel yeah. happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah man. It's, I mean, see, I, 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 I do find a lot of beauty in things that are sad. Yeah, like it's not trying to be like a bummer, and it's not like something trying to be like. I don't think the glass is ever half empty. If the glass is half empty, or if there's three drops down there, I'll still try to tell myself it's a full glass of water. Right. That's just who I am. But I see a lot of beauty in those sad moments. And I said that you know, pressure makes diamonds, man. Those horrible moments in our lives can actually be the best moments we've ever had because it can make us do something we are scared to do or do something we don't believe in, even in ourselves. But it can lead us to our goals. Like, you know, like half the people that we see on magazines or movies or on TV, half those people struggled real hard to get there. You know, everyone struggled to get anywhere. And and I think that's like, you know, I, I really try to like put that across is like, you know, like, man. I want to struggle like, you know, blowing up sounds really cool. Like, you know, the taller Anthony guy or anyone that goes viral like that, that seems really, really cool. But also, like, I think it's really important to have those years of like, even now, the way I've worked really hard to stay with friends and do a close knit thing to tour the way I do to do my show. If I hadn't had those years of like being heckled in the punk rock scene go out there and you're playing rhythm guitar you've only played guitar for like a year you know you're not good and there's these dudes that stand right in front of you just like you suck you yeah know? like but that dude's actually the best dude you'll ever meet because that's yeah. the dude that will give you like not even in a mean way like he hurt your feelings like because i used to have dudes that do that shit but i would like be tough and be fine about it but i'd be so butthurt like yeah like, oh yeah you know, it sucks like, when somebody tells you like yeah sucks. but but those are the dudes that like you realize like man wh- what did that guy have to go through that day to do that to somebody right you know like and it it just made me think more about things that way. You know, like I feel really lucky the way that I was able to learn about music and like of course I grew up in it with my family, but like to really like experience music my own personal journey is like yeah, the bummer stuff, man, can kind of be the coolest stuff that'll ever happen. Or like, you know, I've had those days happen, man. Like like my song IOU. I've had I've had five different situations in my life I've just been broke. You know, or something's really happened and I know I figured it out, but at the time, just one person being nice for 10 minutes is why I really figured it out. Yeah. And it didn't mean they fixed it. doesn't mean they did it. Or even if they gave me anything, it's just like someone sitting in solidarity with you. Uh, My, you know, my dog Piper, I made that whole record recently about her years ago. I'm talking years ago, man. She almost died like right before Christmas. Um, I had pencil on my Christmas tree and I was working and so I was in school, and I was working, like, two jobs to pay for it. And I came home, and my dog had gotten the pencil. And I was young, and she was only, like, three. I didn't realize that pencil is, like, really dangerous for dogs. And I came home, and she was, like, in a pile of her own, like, foam, choking to death on the ground in yeah. my house at, like, 1 in the morning. I'm going, like, 90 miles an hour to the emergency vet. I'm driving, like, blasting down the road, taking my dog to the vet. And I get there, and she, she literally almost dies in my arms. Like, she's choking to death. It's terrifying. And uh, I spent every dollar I have. I have like two grand in my name. I spent all of it on her because the Virginia vets will spend like seven hundred before they even look at the dog. Right. Twenty four, and they save her. And all I have to my name is like ten bucks, and I go to buy like a cheap bottle of wine, and I go to this liquor store, and I buy this cheap bottle of wine, and my dog has to be at the hospital for like two days, and it's supposed to be Christmas, and I'm just broker than a joke, man. And this liquor store attendant, this guy who sells at a liquor store, just ends up becoming one of my best friends in the world. This is someone I don't know, didn't go to school with, didn't grow up with. I actually was the minister at his wedding. Uh, he's now one of my oldest friends. And, like, I was checking out buying wine at a liquor store. And this guy said, hey, man, are you all right? And just I just told him all about it. Nobody else was in there. And, like, you know, like, it was one of those things where, like, that one person being nice to me, like, you know, I have a friend for life. And I've had friends for life that I grew up with or things that worked out that way. But then also, like, when I play music, I try to have that same relation where, like, you know, tell somebody how you feel or just if somebody needs it. You know, it's like I, I do songs about death and things like that. Not not it's cool that it sucks, but we all can grow from it with each other you know yeah and i have a lot of people that tell me like man your show fucked me up but i love it and you know like the catharsis man i I like that emotional release yeah i'm a you know 
by all appearances, people see this stuff and they think, oh, it's Tyler. He's a, it's, but like, I'm pretty deep, dark motherfucker Nothing a lot of the time. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? But a similar thing, I, for years, people told me I had a drug problem. Yeah. And they would scream at me and they'd tell me, you got to change. And then Eric, who was with me, my buddy, Eric, uh, my sister begged him to bail me out when I was, I was sitting in, in jail, like looking at like 20 years in prison at one point. Out? No, oh, didn't. Shit. Best thing anybody ever did for me. He made me sit there. And through that experience, another old, an old meth head body man that I was celled up with who had been in and out of prison his whole life. We would walk in this circle at this private prison deal waiting for trial. And yeah. he would just a talk to me. And then one day after like telling stories, he was like, hey, do you ever think that uh, you got a drug problem? And he asked me. Yeah. And no one had ever asked Sometimes me. Sometimes that's what you need. That's what I needed. All you need is someone And to I ask stopped and him. thought about it. He goes, dude, every story you're telling, you, you were high. And I was like, fuck, you might be right, man. And then after that, he's like, well, let dude, me show you how to get help. That's the shit that'll change your life. Like yeah. I said, that liquor store attendant, he's a guy named Robert Player. He's one of my best friends in the world. I just got off another tour. I told you I did solo mm -hmm. tour. Played in Chattanooga. I had two dudes. They're both Portland dudes in a band called the Bridge City Center. It's my friends Clyde yep. and Luke and uh, our merch person. He put us up for two days. So I stayed at his house, had rooms for us, like came to my show. Like, dude still supports me and hangs out with me. He used to live with me. Like, you know, and, wow. and I have tons of great friends, dude. And this is a guy that was a complete stranger over a so decade just ago. How you're doing. Just asked how I was doing when I needed it more than I'd ever needed it in my entire life. And you know, you have people like your best friends and your parents that do that, but sometimes when it's a stranger, that's that yeah. shit that like gives you hope in the world. Man. Right. And you know, like and and uh yeah, man, like I, I do feel like, you know, I try to bottle those experiences sometimes with people or like, you know, sometimes people can be a little much and if you tolerate them, or maybe you can help them get through it a little. You right. Know, like, we've all had those days we just lose our shit. It happens. I know we're on a time crunch. We're on a time crunch, people. I mean, I'm just thankful we're that doing you came okay. to do it. We're, yeah, we're, we're good. What are we looking at? It's 110 right now. Okay, that's now. not too bad. 110 no, is not bad. I'm 15 we're, minutes. From yeah. Yeah. 110. We, we got another 10 or 15. We, we got here. time. Um, what do you want to uh By the way, you wanted to ask me what my favorite punk band I'm going to ask you, what's your favorite punk rock band? Okay. How about not favorite, because that's hard, but what's your most influential to you as a punk rock band that you really in, like? Care about? Um, I, It would have to, like, I have to go by, so when Decades? I had a guy recently asked me, he goes, oh, he, he was like a, a guy who was on the show, he's a local musician, and he said, oh, well, he's like younger, he's like 28, 24, something like that, but he's like, when I think of punk, I think of the crass and, and stuff like that, and he was named off some bands, I was like, oh, dude, like when you ask me about punk, the first thing that pops to my head is the Stooges. You know, it's funny, when most people, when people ask me about punk, I think Merle Haggard. <laughs> Well, and then that's and where it's, it gets uh, to. Like, when I talk about the blend, though, I, yeah. it's funny because I do have a favorite punk rock band. I love punk bands, too, and I love punk music. But, like, when I think of punk rock every time, and that's it, like, if I had to take a lie detector test, gun to my head since I was a kid. If I think about punk rock, the first thing I always think about is Merle Hacker. Yeah. That guy went to prison and saw Mr. Blue Suede Shoes perform in prison. He's like, right. one day I'm going to be up there performing with you. Yeah. And the Ray Price, Ray Price is probably like, oh, yeah, I'm sure. And yeah, years yeah, later, yeah. there comes fucking Merle Haggard. I yeah. Mean, dude it's was, wild. like, or Oki from Muskogee. He gets the key to the city, Oklahoma, all that. He's making fun of Oklahoma, and they give him the key to this. Like, yeah. the dude is like, that is, I just feel like there's a lot of, That's a lot of honkies are very punk rock. There's some real, there's some real uh, punk dude, rock Dude, and it's like a whole there. thing, like, when I was a kid, it was always this argument of, like, oh, was it the Sex Pistols or the Ramones? And it's like, well, those but, bands are great. Stiff but Little like, Fingers was personally for me, like, Irish punk. Like, right. Stiff Little Fingers was huge for me. I love that. I just, somebody was talking about Alternative how Alternative All-Stars, 78 RPMs. Yeah. That shit fucking love it, uh, dude. Somebody told me, they're like, dude, I, I got to see the Dropkick Murphys the other day. I'd never seen them before. I was, And I, I looked at them and I said, I feel sorry for you. And they were like, what? I was like, dude, I saw them on... Uh, mm -hmm. two record number two. I saw them, and I still have a T-shirt from the first record. And that band was fucking. That band was punk as shit. But it, if I'm gonna go like my favorite punk band of all time, like is probably the Reagan Youth. Yeah, like that. That's that, a great choice. Yeah, that's like, the top that's five. My favorite. If I'm gonna go real punk rock band and not have a country answered, which is Merle Haggard, but I it really is my ultimate answer is yeah. Merle Haggard. Yeah. <laughs> One day I'll write that book. Yeah. But uh. But no, if my uh, TSOL. Okay. 
for sure. Uh, uh, or hard tie SNFU. Canadian. Okay. I love some aggressive Canadian punk rockers. Yeah, and SNFU, society's no fucking use, really knew how to like, but I love TSOL. Like, that, that's a band for me. Um, just... I was big into hardcore. Okay. But, like, so when I was coming up, like, me- like for being a guy that hung out in the streets, yeah. like, fucking Madball. Hell. Oh, that, dude, that's it, Madball. Dude. Madball oh, Madball's yeah. hold it down, dude. Helmet, like, dude. That, like, yeah, shit that like that. fucking all, yeah. album is just, like, it, it has everything. It's, like, the perfect blend of like punk rock, hardcore, and hip hop all in one for oh, me. Dude. But dude, I love Rancid and dude, people like talk get about hip hop. The first Beastie Boys record. It's punk punk rock fuck. is a fuck, but also a rap record. But also like, hip hop. So record. good, dude. It's so crazy. fucking good. Yeah. But even dude, like Blowfly. <sighs> Blowfly, how dude. like Blowfly? How was Blowfly not? Haven't punk needed rock? an extra angel. That's why he had to leave us, dude. Yeah. Blowfly, like we wouldn't have ODB without Blowfly, right? Yeah, because of how much he inspired him, man. Dude, like beyond fucking... that, fucking Swamp Dog, dude. Oh, I got dude. Swamp Dog sitting right up there on my table, and uh, people come over Swamp all the time, dog. and they're like, "What is this?" And I'm like, "Dude, you don't know." I was like, "Don't you like Johnny Paycheck?" Yeah, dude. Because like that's my um. If we're talking about old country, that's my. That's my Swamp Dog's a hell of a choice. Well, no, well, Swamp Dog is my he's bilaterally my choice. Your bilateral but choice. It's it's Johnny Paycheck for Johnny me. Johnny Paycheck. Like nobody was sadder than that dude no, to oh, me. Dude, you know, not just Johnny Paycheck. You know he played every instrument. Right. Like before he was ever a front man. Like the history of the dude is just phenomenal. Literally, the guy was actually playing for back bands for half of the major country artists of the scene. Yeah, and, and, and then through that, literally, you, you're the star of the show. Uh, John, get out of here! <laughs> uh, and 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 uh, I will say that show the uh, people your baby. Balls. It, it really was like he played with everyone before he even started his career, and his voice. He is one of the most iconic voices in country that's yeah. ever lived. And then died so tragically, of course, that George Jones had to pay for right. his funeral. Because he he was just literally drugs, just the and you know the guy had such a tragic story, but but also like such an inspirational one because he came from nothing. And yeah. then like you know some of the hugest songs for other people, like Johnny Paycheck was good friends with David Allen Coe. Right. He did not write "Take This Job and Shove It." David Allen Coe did, right. and he gave him the song because he believed in Johnny Paycheck so much. You and know, it's what, like well, and the other song with fuck, it's slipping my mind the song that uh, Swamp Dog wrote for him. Oh, dude! Like um, a lot of people wrote great songs for him, man, and the that's fuck. It's like his number one song, but next there's to a lot of it's show. hard. Dude, Johnny... so good. Like, man, just like when you hear him, uh, busted, Austin. Oh, that's the, yeah. When you hear uh, eleven months and twenty nine days, mm-hmm. just when you hear him sing it, you know, like, dude, this guy did that. Well, that's like, that's the same thing with why I love Merle Haggard. Where I always right. punk rock. That a lot of dudes that were outlaws were outlaws had a mentality. They did drugs. They partied pretty hard. They toured the circuit, but they weren't actually outlaws. Like Merle yeah. Haggard was an outlaw. He was Freddy a Fender. prisoner. Yes, Freddie Fender yeah. was Freddy an outlaw. Fender was an outlaw. Like you know, there, there, uh, uh, like your Keith Moons. There are yeah. people out there that are not trying to do it because it's a gimmick. They're just yeah. like, nah, bro. This El is Duce. This is yeah, El <laughs> Duce. This this is who I am. Like you know, and God forbid, El Duce. Jesus Christ. Like yeah. any of that. Like I mean. Your persona can encompass you to a level where it's dangerous, you know. Like, but I will say, and I've told this story. I'll give you the the quick version of it. The um, what made me at 15 years old? I went to go see my first show it, by it? myself. What was it? It was I had seen the Dropkick Murphys and uh, the Anti Heroes with my sister, and she was in a Sharp Skinhead gang. So I grew up around all these Sharp Skinheads, and I went to see the Misfits. With Michael Graves, okay, and Guar was the opener. Nice. Prior to the show, we only had two tickets. There was four of us. I'm out front. I'm looking bummed. This random dude comes up and talks to me, and he goes, "What's the matter, bud?" You know, same thing. Tell him what's wrong. It's Dave Brocky. <sighs> See, he puts me on the so guest cool list. About day, yeah, dude. Like, puts me on the guest list. Scalps my dude, so, tickets. Dude, Southern hospitality. Virginia, yeah, those are Virginia boys. Yeah. like that's the thing. Like, scalped those are... my tickets, dude, and gave me the money so and cool. said, "Go buy shirts for your friends." And dude, we cool spent two. We got four out. Like, we got like four hundred dollars for the two tickets I had. <laughs> it was crazy. One of the first records I bought on vinyl was probably "Crack the Egg." 
You okay. know, and I hate to say it, this is before I got into Guar's music hardcore. The album cover was just so fucking rad. Yeah. You know, you're a kid. I was probably like 11. Yeah. Like, I was crate digging younger, though. I, I, I've i been into records for a long time. And yeah, like, that, to this day, they're icon. I, I mean, people yeah. see that band. And, like, they've done so good with, like, with Dave passing away. And they had to shuffle a couple of front men. But now what they're doing is awesome. Yeah. You know, and I love sick. it. It's nice to see. Where they they're... just is like, hey, we're going to use the guys that were always in the band, yeah. which is I mean, cool. And that's the thing. Dave would want that. He's yeah. not here. You know, they're, like the, the band was supposed VHSs, to be. Like, like, yeah. The whole, like when you find out, like when it deep down, it's just a bunch of theater dorks, dude. Just a bunch of just punk a bunch rock of nerds, theater man. nerds, Just a bunch dude. of talented music theory nerds, <sighs> man, so that good. really are good at making costumes. Like, yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's glorious, man. It's it, it's it's the true epitome of, of of a cool band, I think. I mean, think back in the day, like Funkadelic Parliament, all of, like the, the look, dude, the outfit. I, they were just I got going to meet with it. George Clinton once, and it was, dude, 15 years old. I went to see Blink 182. But only because it was at an arena because uh, Bad Religion was opening up for nice. them. And I wanted to see Bad Religion real bad. Fuck yeah. And afterwards, right where we drove through downtown at in the River Market, that George Clinton played outside there. That's awesome. He walked that whole, there's this whole museum full of smoke. He walks outside, he looks at me and my sister. Barks like a dog, and he like we're getting introduced by this promoter that my nice. brother in law worked for. He just grabbed my sister's hand, licked it like a dog, and walked off. And it was like ever since then, I've been like, oh my god, that's the coolest fucking thing that I ever saw happen, man. It's pretty funny. But then Rollins spit in my sister's face once, and that was cooler because my I just thought my sister was a bitch at the time. <laughs> so <laughs> that was that made me like Henry Rollins. Did you know? <laughs> so I I grew up really love. I am from the east coast but i i grew up loving the dc dc scene, right the the eighties dc scene and do you know that ian mckay and henry rollins both worked at a hog and dolls yes in dc yeah, yeah yeah for years at the time same time they were like minor threat and fucking like the right before he le yeah. left to go to be in black right flag. before they left every like dude and and they were like you could get your ass kicked. Imagine like you someone kicks your ass at a house show and it's it's like Henry Rollins it's, or Ian McKay and you go to buy ice cream for your girlfriend the next day. It's like and you go in there and it's <laughs> it's like you want sprinkles on that fucker. Like, yeah. you know, and it's him. Like, yeah. you know, and you're like, Well, you work at an ice cream store? Like, yeah. you know, like even those people, it's interesting to think about like some of those punk rock icons or even country music icons. It's like a lot of it's like you're pulling that silver lining from every bad storm of chaos coming your way, and you never yeah. know what's going to happen. You just keep making it work. You got to keep rolling you with just the punches. Keep rolling with it, man. But yeah, I mean that that that's awesome. That's there's some good punk rock stories, some good ones. You yeah, know, fuck yeah. Well, dude, even this, I started this on a loading dock, talking to Eric about a car that we had built, and then it went from this, and it was like, oh, I got to get better audio. Okay, I need better video, and then when I moved in here, it's like oh, I'm just gonna learn how to. I'm just gonna build a television set and like do this deal what's your dream car my dream car i own my dream car the one out back no my uh, 1975 chevrolet g10 van and it's i have one Fuck yeah um it's i'm going to start working on it and i've said it for the, like the last two years but i had my heart attack when i was working on the van and it's been like a weird thing in my mind that I, I think the car is trying to kill me. So I'm like finally getting over that and I'm going to start working on Hopefully it Hopefully it's not like Little Bastard 2 or anything. No, 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 no. 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 It's like just, that. it's all in my head. I've had, it's been a real struggle since when you almost die after like sounds living very, a crazy very, life. It sounds very Dominic Toretto. I'm terrified of that car. Yeah, and I yeah, yeah. It. yeah. Like awesome. when, when, when you've. I lived a wild life and, yeah. and could have died a lot and never really processed that. Here, but, and then know. when I almost did, when my own body almost killed me, it was like, holy fuck. So it's been like a path back from that, you know, like yeah. the mind, the mind is a fucker, man. It dude, really of is. Of course it is. I mean, you know? no question. You know, like, oh, dude, but it builds character. Yeah. You know, but uh, I like that. I've always wanted a, I want to get like a 70s. Like probably like a Levi X edition Gremlin early okay. 70s and make it yeah. like a wheel stand car, put like a 350 in it, take yeah. the straight line out, you know, take the spring brakes off, put like nice brakes and make it like a wheel stand car. Yeah. I think that'd be really awesome. That's like sick. dream car style. You know, we didn't talk cars a lot, but I do love cars. I mean, and you haven't even seen, have you seen inside of my tour bus? No. So I modded it. It's got five bunk beds in it. There's six, oh, four shit. that lay in and, you know, all our merch fits in there. Like yeah. I've modded out the whole and so there's velvet paintings inside mine. 
Oh, Get awesome. Puma and an eagle in there. Yeah, it's our spirit. They keep us safe in there. But yeah, man. Yeah, and then everything I have is custom. Like the Dodge, it's got. It looks uh, nice. The it's interior. got a slant six in it, and it's not running right now. Will you stop? What are you defaulting? Uh, it's got a slant six in it, but then I put a four speed floor shift in it with overdrive, so I can drive that thing like ninety miles an hour down the interstate. Oh, yeah. But I'm gonna build the interior for it, and that's Lochnar. That's what it's. It's after the movie Loch-Nar. Heavy. Yeah, the yeah. sum of all evil. Uh, That's but dude, awesome. yeah, I just love it. Uh, Eric has this bitch in uh, sixty Biscayne. We basically okay. turn into an Apala called oh, the shit. Acapulco Gold. Okay, and I'll send you some photos of it cool. online. But like Von Franco did a cartoon drawing of it with Eric coming out of the car oh, shit. and shit. That's like just did it and sent it to him. Like, hey, I I saw your car and like. Love it. We we kind of know each other and like just invents like it's fucking Von Franco, dude. Like oh, that's yeah. like the king shit of like yeah. the rat pink I mean, world. Yeah, I mean, after the Ed only Roth. thing, yeah, it, 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 I was about to say the only way you could get cooler is if you brought Ed Roth back from the grave to draw something. Yeah, free, you know, like well, I dude, mean, and there's like all kinds of Ed Roth shit here because he came here all the time and some people were really close to him. And we there's a lot of his stuff too. I've noticed like all around Iowa, all around yeah. this area. He was huge know, like, here, but also like that all that shit that people can. They contrived that like choppers and hot rods all started in California. It didn't really. Those guys and the guys in the Midwest were doing that shit way before. And people came here and saw it. And then they would take it out to the coast. So back in the day, things came from the middle of the country and moved out to where now they sort they. Oh, for buddy, forever, I'm, I'm, from this, from, I'm from the central know. south. Yeah. We, us honkies have been welding things together and driving them for forever. Uh, over 100 years. Yeah. But then they became trends. So, yeah, I mean, I'm all about it, man. I love the ingenuity of, of mechanic. You know, it's we, we got your, of course, technology's exploding, but I do like that still there's an engine pretty much – the combustion engine is something that was created over 100 years ago. Yeah, and it but, still you know, reigns supreme no matter what. It's still going to reign supreme. It's got a supreme. vibe. Yeah. It, it's got a vibe. So, you know, I like this is also kind of a car podcast on top of music. You know, yeah. that's awesome. All about it. I mean, you know, I do love uh, riding around in my E450. I could probably just pull on a 12-person van in a trailer, but I, I like more driving the big van. You yeah, know? no, that thing's sick, though. It's cool. Rochelle, I got that thing with 30,000 miles on it, 15 grand, had a hydraulic lift in it. Took it out, sold it to fund all the models right. on the inside. And I mean, she's gas. She's not diesel. Yeah. She's a dually in the back. Six tires better Perfect. than four. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Plenty of storage. And we we put over 100000 on that thing, man. It's great. As like, long as you maintain it, it'll go. Oh, dude. I It'll go. I, I spent a lot of money on her, but I love her. You know? Yeah. And she's great. Like, I, I've gotten, I always knew a little bit about cars, but I've learned a lot more. Yeah, Rochelle alive. You know, we call her Rochelle because it was I bought it from a place called the Rochelle Center. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's on. They say that's yeah. why. Yeah, it's Rochelle. That's our girl. So yeah, I mean, all the development in Nashville. They were like, I found it on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. Well, dude, yeah, one dude. day you're you'll keep that. Right? Oh, dude, I, that, and then that like thing, one day you'll probably like. They'll bury I, I will me manifest in that thing. this one day. You're gonna have a bus. You know what I mean? Thanks for manifesting and, that. And, <laughs> I appreciate that. And Thanks. somebody, and you're just going to be along for the ride, but you're going to get home from tour, and you're going to look over, and there's going to be Rochelle I'm always gonna there. going to turn her into, like, a side house, a guest house. Yeah, so yeah. that'll be where you go get stoned. When and she just can't drive songs. anymore. Yeah, yeah, when she can't drive anymore, we'll just park her in the backyard. It'll be your Airbnb. Come stay at Four's there Airbnb. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not against that at all. I'm not against that at all. Well, this was great. Dude, thank, thank, thank you, you so, much. so much. Dude, not many uh, times have I after a show been down to do that but you know you came to the show last time you've come to my show many times and yeah. supported me so i'm dude, so happy I'm to just, do this thank i'm you. glad i'm sure had it not been first day i already knew i was like this first is day. only happening because it's first day of tour first right? day only because it's first. no 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 yeah. no buddy i, I mean it. dude thank but you. i appreciate it man um, yeah man no seriously thank you like it's been it, awesome it's been fun and, it's you know, you know and everything it's just Four in the strange band, Spotify. Check it out if you like it. YouTube. You know. Dude, uh, we didn't talk about it. The fucking videos that you're making are <laughs> Did awesome. Did you like, dude. like the, the, the one where I'm the dog? I the like that. I love the ones playing in the drainage ditch. In the drainage ditch. So that those is are crazy. Cool. We did those. Uh, we'll close on this. Why not? Uh, so I shot those. I have one more of those that comes out on the 8th of March. And we, we did that session video and. Uh, I work with the uh, Shooter Jennings label. I just made that record with him, VCR. Yeah, we didn't even get into that. Well, no, no, no. It's all, you know, people can Google that stuff. Yeah. But yeah, Four in the Strange Band. Check us out. Love our music. I'm Coleman Williams. We love it. Uh, but, you know, uh, we, we, the label wanted me to do some content, and we were having problems getting a bunch of stuff set up for the band doing videos. So I was trying to just make something happen. 
uh, and I knew the skate spot that's by that's by a so that's a that's by the interstate on some property that's beside a Home Depot. And if you go behind this Home Depot and you walk down these woods and you go through these woods through this drainage tunnel, through this like creek by the like big fucking interstate, there's this crazy graffiti tag. Uh, skate spot that was built by these kids like DIY style rails and everything and barely anyone ever goes there because not many people know about it anymore because it was made by kids from my generation yeah uh, but uh yeah man like we just went there and shot those videos and six hours after because that is for flooding and stuff and like Nashville like my old property in Nashville I live a little out of town now got destroyed in the original flood and like Damn. dude it's it's crazy like Six hours after we did all those three videos, and thank you for liking those, this massive tornado came like two miles from where I was, super flooding, a couple people died, and like, holy shit, if we had done that a little later in the day, because we decided to do it earlier, we were going to do it later you in the day, I would have fucking died, like, Dude. that's in a, like, that's a thing where, like, and it looks like all that graffiti and stuff, but that's why that's down there is because nobody goes down there, but dude, I totally could have died making those dude, videos. they're so sick, kinda, they're great, Thank dude. you, man, that, that's it. uh uh, my friend Jason Misa worked sound and did the videos for those. And like, yeah, man, I've wanted to do session videos forever. I hope to do a lot more of those. I tour so much that even though it's awesome and I love touring, it's affected me making Doing stuff. stuff. Yeah, right, so yeah. I'm trying to like the four every every year, the three to four months, I'm not <laughs> on the road. I'm just trying to constantly make stuff. So well, yeah, dude, and it know. shows it, it, your authenticity comes Thank out you, in the art from the artwork to the live show. To yeah, the, man. The, everything you do, it, it, it's truly authentic, and I, I really dig it, and thank you for making it. Dude, thank you. Thank you for coming We're by. We're so happy to be oh, here, man. Yeah. Like, rocking out. Yeah. Rocking out uh, Black Magic. Thank you so much, man. This was Dude, super awesome. Thank you. I'm stoked. And fucking, if you guys are watching this, like, and you're here, he's going to fucking be back in one month in, in Lawrence. No, uh, June 22nd. Is it that long? June 22nd long at the way? bottleneck. Okay, it's in June. So, Lawrence, Kansas, June 22nd at the bottleneck. Me and my friend, Brooke Blanche. With Brooke, uh, uh, dude, yeah. the Calamity Kids. Yeah. So, please, yes. And and that opening, it's going to be awesome. There's going to be a bunch of bands playing that show. So, please come out to bottleneck if you're seeing this uh, in this area. We're going to have a lot of fun in June. I'm touring in Tilbin. So, I do this tour of Possessed by Paul James. Then I'm out all month of April and the early part of May with the Delta Bombers. I and, saw and, that, and it's yeah. not coming here. And, but I, are you guys going to Torque Fest in May? Um, in May. So right after I finish with them on the fifth day, I am still touring with just my band for another two and a half weeks. So I'm going to look because I think the Delta Bombers are playing up at Torque Fest. Yeah, I'm not Iowa. doing Torque Fest with them, but but I because oh, I'm doing some other shows right after That's, that. Uh, but, you would uh, love that. That's yeah. my buddy John Wells' show. Oh, dude, I'll be there. We're hey, all we'll all go. Up well, to eventually, that. you know, we'll. Get, I've seen we'll, the Delta Bombers like a hundred times. Hell, get dude. me on that. Yeah, I'll, we'll I'll, do I'll make that, a phone you know, call. Dude. But uh, yeah, man. Uh, like I said, this is awesome. Watch Black Magic. This is sick, dude. Go listen to Coleman for in the Strange Band. Woo, we'll see love. you guys next time. Well, dude, that was awesome. Dude, this is so awesome. Thank you again, man. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, hit the like and subscribe buttons. And check out one of these other videos. We'll see you next time.